that reformed strata in the even amongst the Southern Baptists. But it sounds okay. like what you've been exposed to is the much more um, disconnected from history version. Um, take the time to even read read Calvin and the Institutes on the subject. Yeah, I, I, need, I need to get around to that. Yeah, point. you do. But, yes, but you I do. I do want to clarify. I do want to clarify. You just you what you, so what you're telling me through all this is is you don't really know why the true presence idea developed so strongly so early on. We just don't really know. No, I didn't say Other that. Than just some external. No, 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 no. I did not why, say that. What caused it? No, no, Joe. The the spiritual presence of Christ with believers who were under horrific persecution between approximately A.D. 64 and the peace of the Church in A.D. 313. His Uh spiritual presence with his people in the gathered body was more real to them than any concept of transubstantiation could ever make it. The idea of spiritual presence... I, I, I I I, I hear your, your, your view on this, but I don't buy it. I'm sorry, because when I read Justin Martyr, it, his wording is too strong for me. It, I don't see this possible. So when Justin Martyr himself person. interprets that as prayers of thanksgiving and remembrance, you don't buy that. No, because uh, I understand the sacrifice of praise element. I don't what about remembrance? Yeah, the re- yeah, remembrance is fine. But my point is, is the real, pre- the true presence, the way he words it in chapter 66 of his first apology, it's so strong to me. I just would never hear even a Reformed, you know, very high view of the sacraments Reformed person. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't expect them to write that. You wouldn't expect them to write that. Okay. Hey, I mean, you know, uh, look, Joe, I can't stop you. It, it, trust me, my, my, my concern is uh, I've, I've talked with so many people over through, uh, down through the years, and, it, it, and once you want to do it, you're going to do it. The problem is I then talk to those folks five, ten years later, and they go, man, did I waste my, that, that, that entire portion of my time. I'm trying to help you with that, but I can't stop you. Yeah, obviously it's up to me. Ultimately. Once you, once you, once you, you get the, the desire well, for the mind. smells and bells, it's, it's I, I can't stop. The Calvinist God, ultimately, what I do. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, uh, that may be, but uh, the the problem is you get held responsible for acting upon the, the desires of your heart. So uh, you, you can't not dodge that. Causes one. me to do it. <laughs> oh no, no, uh, that's not. You 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 seem to misunderstand the the difference between primary causation and secondary causation, and God judges based upon you acting upon the desires of your heart. You cannot use his sovereignty to excuse rebelling against his truth, Joe. Don't even go there. Don't even say it again. Don't even Compatible play with it. Don't even joke really about it. Don't even joke you know about that. it. You know that. What? Compatible is, free, com- compatible is free will, even if there are um, secondary causes. The secondary causes ultimately have necessary causes prior to them. So ultimately uh, they uh, can't be If you want to argue with, uh, with the early church in Acts 4, if you want to argue with the prophet Isaiah and, and Isaiah 10, you, you go ahead and do that. But, I mean, um, you're just arguing with every single Jew ever. I mean, every single Jew in the Jewish faith. Yeah, you mean the way. ones that rejected the Messiah. Okay. Okay, got you, Joe. Appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye-bye. Oh, my.